Hey guys, Metal Stash here, and today the video I'm bringing you is going to be about uh, telling a unit how to uh, do multiple commands, like how you can queue up commands, and uh, this is something that I've kind of taken from StarCraft a little bit, because in StarCraft you can tell uh, cert you know, all your units to... Uh, do multiple commands by holding down shift and it's a very useful thing to uh, to have an RTS game so I wanted to try to get it done and I can't say this is the best way to do it but it is a way that I found to do it and I uh, it it does work so I'm gonna show you guys what that is um, also I have a new mic now so it might sound a little bit better um, it does however pick up a lot more sound so like if I move in my chair uh, it picks up that squeak and when I click it picks up the mouse click so that's that's a little bit annoying but it uh, probably picks up my voice a little bit better so hopefully it sounds a little better so let's get started let's go into the project uh, so what I have today play it here is commanding multi or queuing up commands to uh, tell units to go to multiple places so first off you see that I've changed the waypoint a little bit um, it's just some placeholder textures I've changed the waypoint itself to a plane to so I can change that uh, to a better looking texture and then just a line render to go from the waypoint to the uh, building so if I hold down shift and click it now queues up another waypoint to be added at the end of this waypoint so if I say queued up another one for it to circle around here and I then created a spider to be queued up to be built once it is built it will come out and start to travel these waypoints and I uh, if I click away from this building waypoints go away because I don't need to see them anymore and I can set uh, other waypoints for this one but if I come back to this building they're still there so it stores the waypoints that are uh, unique to this unit and also not just to buildings because that would be really boring if you just could tell buildings to tell units to do this uh, you can queue up commands for your units so like if you want to move around units in multiple locations you can do that and it works pretty well uh, the only thing that's kind of quirky and weird is sometimes it doesn't take a straight path towards the waypoint uh, so I don't know how to f really fix that other than doing a uh, check for against obstacles between the two points and then doing just a straight line run or and otherwise using a star uh, but the other thing that is uh, nice about this is when I move the unit it doesn't show the waypoint every time I move it because I don't need to it's only if I hold down shift that it actually starts rendering the waypoints because you saw there how it took like this box travel along here it's not really what I want but I can ch I can fix that a little bit so um, the only thing I really changed in here was the waypoint itself and the only thing I added to it or changed was the uh, mesh rent or the mesh that it renders which is now a plane it's just a one by one plane and I added a line render and what a line renderer does is it renders a 3d line into the scene and you set two positions for it to render at so it's the starting and ending position you can set the width of the starting width and the ending width you can set the starting color and ending color and you can also set the material and right now I'm just using a material so that you can see it uh, through the fog and stuff like that um, so what I've changed in the scripts themselves uh, it's mainly in the unit script the, uh, it's been rearranged quite a bit and I've actually just thought of something that I could add to it to make it even cooler uh, by w how to s decide whether it's completed a certain command so to start off when the player tells the unit to be commanded uh, 
it's going to decide a couple of things. If the consecutive command button is pressed, that is uh, left shift or right shift, uh, it's going to add the hit that it is given to the command's array. And all I did was add two different arrays uh, to the unit where uh, it stores the waypoints that are needing to be rendered just so you can see them and the commands that you, the unit have has been given. So I add this hit to the commands uh, array and then I... Oh my god, stop this. Only in debut does it do this. Uh, so it also checks whether or not uh, this is a building. If it's a building, uh, then it needs to clear the waypoints and add uh, the command to the array. Now this is only if the left, sh left shift and right shift excuse me, uh, is pressed, then it will go to these checks. And these are just two different checks to check if it's a unit or a building. Now if it's a unit, that means it doesn't have a building component, then it should decide and act towards this hit. And this is just a, a modification of a function I had before where it would decide if the unit is an enemy, uh, an ally, or if it's just the ground, it'll decide what to do with that. And decide and act is um, a function uh, where it'll get a, a decision string from the function decide this hit and decide this hit t is the um, what I kind of had before for the command function but I took that apart and uh, divided it into different parts so that I can call them in different times so I don't have to use um, <coughs> I don't have to copy code over and over again it's just making it easier on me to do that so if it's deciding to move then it needs to move to that point and if it's deciding to attack it needs to attack to that point so this is just a decision uh, block where it decides whether it needs to move attack follow stuff like that and defend uh, so when it decides to attack or not to attack decide and act it it does those decisions now what I uh, what is the main part that I've added is down in the update function I've added a new uh, check waypoints so I'm checking fog and I'm checking waypoints so in check waypoints that's a new function that I've added where uh, it's going to check first whether or not commands dot length is not equal to waypoints that length that means it's being given more commands then it is drawing waypoints. So it needs to update everything and get waypoints up to speed with commands so that you have a number of waypoints that need to be uh, drawn as there are commands. So for every, uh, this actually took me a little bit to get this uh, for loop because I, I just, I don't know what it was, it was just really weird. Uh, it, the starting point is gonna be waypoints.length. You're assuming I'm assuming this, that uh, the end of waypoints.length is going to be less than commands.length. And that's an assumption that might bite me in the butt later, but uh, it's something that I think it, it, if it does, I can fix it fairly easily. But uh, what I do is store first the hit, which is commands of yeah, at that index. Um, you have to because of pragma strict I can't just access commands of I and call raycast hit functions from that you have to save it as a raycast hit variable so that you can then call those functions because it it returns an object and not a raycast hit that's why and it's it's just really w kind of weird but I uh, then I store the position of that hit and add 0.25 just so the waypoint is going to be drawn just a little bit of above the ground. It's just a visual thing. So it's going to instantiate a waypoint at that position and rotation. And then if I is equal to zero, that means this is the first uh, waypoint. It's going to tell the line renderer to set its first position 
you have to specify specify which uh, index of position you're setting. You can only do zero one because there's only two positions of a line. So your first uh, position needs to be this unit. So that works whether it's a building or a normal unit because you want you know the normal unit is going to draw the line from the first waypoint to itself. So it updates every time. Otherwise, if it's if i is not equal to zero, so it's not the first one, it just needs to set the first position equal to the hit before itself. So it's going to get the command one less than the current index that's being uh, instantiated or created. Then finally, it needs to set the uh, final position to the hit that is being called. So it's drawing it basically at the waypoint. And then I'm going to add uh, waypoints to this so later uh, I can access it and destroy the waypoint pretty easily. Now if now we're, we've gotten uh, waypoints up to speed with commands so that there's as many commands as there are waypoints. So next if, uh, if this is a unit so get component building is null there is no building component you probably heard that chair squeak I need to stop moving so much so it's going to check if it's a unit and if commands dot length is greater than zero that means it's given multiple commands because what it is if uh, a unit's just being told to move it's not uh, it's not a shift command then it's not going to add that command to the command array because uh, it's just going to one spot. It doesn't need to uh, save those commands. So it's going to check if its command length that length is greater than zero. Then it's going to check if it's completed a command. Uh, this is a new thing where I need to decide whether or not it has finished doing what it needs to be doing because when you're storing multiple commands, it could be any type of action. It could be a move, attack, follow, defend, things like that. And I need to make them more modular to uh, actions, so I'm probably going to change it a little bit later of uh, how it completes commands or how it decides whether it has. But if it's completed a command, uh, it should remove the first command because that's where it's probably going to destroy the waypoint, uh, the first waypoint, and then remove the first waypoint from the array. So now uh, you've basically taken all of the arrays and shifted them uh, one space to the left, removing the very first element. Now if uh, waypoints.length is greater than zero, it needs to take and set, um, it needs to update the uh, line renders first position to the unit position. I actually could probably get rid of this because um, this only gets called probably once. This is called uh, updated repeatedly. So actually I could probably get rid of that. Um, you know, I, going through this it actually does help uh, in deciphering some of the things. So now if with this check, if the unit is selected, this is kind of the drawing block where it decides um, if the unit is selected or not. It needs to do different things. It just basically needs to turn the, uh, the waypoints on and off. So it's going to take, for every command, it's going to um, get the waypoint, set its render to true, and get its line render and set it to true. Opposite for uh, if the unit is not selected, it's just going to set all their renders to false. Um, now, that is all for checking waypoints as the general main loop function. Now, the little uh, functions that do a lot of the work is deciding whether the command is completed or not is back up here. So to decide whether a command is completed it's going to need to first decide what type of command it is so I'm going to uh, get a string from the uh, decide this hit function and depending on whether it's a move or attack it needs to do 
d different things to check whether it's completed or not. Now, if it's a move, it just needs to do a simple uh, check to see if uh, if its mover has ended, then it needs to move uh, to the new uh, hit. Actually, that doesn't make sense, but that's why I, uh, yeah, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh my god, that's terrible, but um, I put in just a simple uh, vector 3 distance check, where if it's in this certain distance, it is a uh, true that it has completed the command and if it isn't within a certain distance and it hasn't completed the command yet and by default it returns false so it doesn't ever complete the command if none of this is true um, later I think I'm going to change it to where uh, I need to create like a structure for um, actions to be called where uh, it calls whether or not like it calls the action class to ask the action class whether it's completed a, a command depending on the uh, variables it's given. But uh, the last function that I have needed for checking waypoints is just clearing waypoints. So when you're comp you're uh, either canceling a uh, queued up command or stopping a unit, it needs to clear them. So for every waypoint, it just destroys the waypoint and then it clears both of the arrays making them uh, back to zero. Now one little quirk or weird thing that I found in using uh, these JavaScript arrays when I was uh, in the building script and after a unit has been created I wanted to uh, tell the unit given the buildings commands to basically just set the units commands equal to the buildings commands because that's well that's what it needs to do but because I uh, because they're j uh, JavaScript arrays it actually set it as a reference instead of a uh, copy of the array so uh, you would have it where you would set the waypoint of the building and it would start telling the unit to be commanded because now it's setting uh, the commands of the unit to the building's commands as a reference, not a copy. So what I had to do is uh, to get around it is for to take every um, object that is stored into the array and just uh, access it and set it equal to the commands array. So instead of just setting the two arrays equal to each other, um, I took the individual commands within them and set them equal to the commands array. That was how I was able to get around it because otherwise you would have the unit moving when the building is being commanded and you don't want that. That's stupid. Uh, and the last thing I, I said, I know I, I keep saying the last thing, it's pretty bad. Um, I just set a default spawn point for the building because uh, by default you don't want units spawning inside the buildings. You want them to spawn either on an edge or something like that. And it needed um, a reference to get the uh, spawn point for it so it needed a direction to go so I, I just created that quick variable to uh, fix all that so uh, if the building isn't being commanded or has, doesn't have any commands queued up uh, it just tells the unit to go to that default spawn point so uh, that's about it guys I hope you really enjoyed this video uh, it was really something that was uh, cool to implement into the system and I'm going to try to hopefully make it a little better because it's not quite up to what I want it to be and uh, you know it's not as modular but if you guys enjoyed this video uh, please subscribe because I'm going to be making more videos and if you got any questions leave your comments below and I'll see you guys later bye